Hi everyone, my name is Arjun Gang, a PhD student from Polytechnic of Montreal, Canada. Today I'm delighted to represent our lab to present our new work, Diffusion Bubble Model, a new method for detecting neural inflammation in mouse brains with San Filippo syndrome. I have nothing to declare. San Filippo syndrome is a rare genetic disease. It is caused by lysosomal storage problem in the human body. It can lead to neural degeneration, progressive neural inflammation, and different early deaths. Most models from our collaborators' lab can reproduce hallmark features of this disease, namely neuronal loss and neural inflammation. Until now, there is no efficient way to monitor the progression of this disease, although it is quite important for the clinical treatment and study. Diffusion MRI could be the potential way to do that. However, a simple and efficient diffusion MRI model to detect the brain inflammation, especially in the gray matter, is lacking. In this project, we are going to create a, a new diffusion MRI model to detect the brain microstructure changes caused by San Filippo syndrome. Before looking at uh, our new model, let's look at the structures in the brain tissues. Here we can see a very complex microstructures were in brain tissues. Just imagine 400 of these kind of images we're putting in one different voxel. That's DTI. DTI uses only one different tensor to represent the signals from all the complex structures. It is oversimplified. From previous study, we know isotropic different component is one of the key to detect the brain injuries. So we create a new model. It is a, a sum of increased isotropic different tensors. It's trying to separate the signals from the complex structures into different different levels. Each level is uh, one bubble. It's like a, a kid blowing bubbles there heavily. So we named it the different bubble model. By linking the different volume fractions of these bubbles, we can plot uh, different spectrum curves for these brain tissues. If there are changes or injuries in the brain tissues, the curve will change. To test our model, we performed a scan in a 70 broker scanner. We scanned 10 X vivo control mice and 8 San Filippo syndrome mice. For the diffusion scan, 1B0 and 25 increased B values were used. Since only one different direction for each B value, so in total, 26 different volumes were scanned for each brain. It is comparable to DTI scan. Well, so did the immunohistochemistry image. Uh, from the image on the left, you can see the, there is increased uh, astrocolosis in the corpus callosum in the mutant mice comparing to the control mice. Also, we can see increased activity the microglia in the mutant mice comparing to the control. From this result, we know inflammation happening in the corpus callosum. Moving to the new model results, uh, well, firstly, we know our new model can plot uh, different curves for the mutant mice, which is in yellow, comparing to the control mice, which is in green. We select the slow different component and the fast different component in red and blue boxes. If we zoom in, we can find uh, there is a reduction in slow diffusivity, which reflects complex cell-related changes. Also, there is an increase in fast diffusion component, which reflects edema. DTI result further reveals axonal impairment and demyelination by increasing the actual diffusivity and radio diffusivity. Similar patterns were found in the cortex in the gray matter. Increased actual velocities increased the activity in the microglia and the inflammation happening there. Different uh, curves and uh, reduction in the slow diffusivity, increase in the fast diffusion component. Also, uh, by the way, we can see uh, the changes from early model is much larger than changes from the DTI. So in conclusion, our new model the diffusion bubble model for the first time shows the possibility of using some of isotropic diffusion tensors to detect the brain microstructure changes and inflammation. 
With a DTI comparable acquisition scheme, it can take less than five minutes for the in vivo scan and one minute for the data processing, which made it very attractive for the clinical translation. In the future, uh, we are going to evaluate this model and compare it to the other models such as Nodi, DKI, and RSI. Also, investigating microglial activation and cell density quantification is also ongoing, as well as in vivo experiment in newborns and children. That's all my presentation. Thanks all for your attending. Thanks all the help and support from our collaborators, from our lab members, from our collaborating institutes. Thank you.